Hello, hello everyone. Today I'm happy to welcome you to our webinar, What's New in Arctic Studio 17. I'm here in our Artec Hydroelectrica office in Montenegro. Uh, and we have our chat. Please write, uh, where are you now? What do you expect from our new studio? And now let's talk about all the fantastic opportunities the next iteration of studio offers its users. We will start with a general review in the newest Arctic Studio features. So in less than an hour, you will explore all the content you now see on your screen. And do ask lots of questions in our chat. Are you looking for a seamless, speedy, manageable workflow? Well, good news. The upgraded studio is full of advanced capabilities. Whatever the application, the right features transform your results. Get ultra-realistic 3D models ready for CGI with the improved photo texturing feature. Explore new operations for scanning with targets. Use datum alignment for CAD objects and 3D models to streamline your inspection workflow. Create fusion-independent primitives and check out, check out boolean operations and outer surfacing to make reverse engineering a straightforward process. While some of the improved features are based on new algorithms, Others, or interface, is almost the same as it was before, making the process completely intuitive for you. Other features are made up of entirely new tools, but mastering them will be a quick and easy journey toward excellent results. Among the many, main innovations of Artex Studio 17 related to CAD is the ability to freely create primitives that are not fitted in Fusion. Let's have a look. In the Construct Create tab, you can now make a primitive CAD shape with specific dimensions, quickly resize and move it around. This is a new option to create primitives without using Fusion as a reference for cases when the object either does not have the necessary reference shape or an independent primitive is needed for advanced operations. At the same time, a box button has now been added to the standard primitives that can be constructed. Changes in Artex Studio 17 improve not only the creation of independent primitives, but also the tools for fitting primitives into existing models. One of the most commonly used surface selection tools in the Construct Fit tab of Artex Studio 16 is a segment brush. Previously, the sensitivity and size of the brush could be adjusted only before a surface was selected. Once an area was selected, the sensitivity slider could not be changed or adjusted. The new version of the algorithm presented in Arctic Studio 17 allows you to use the tool in a new way. Now the movement of the segmentation sensitivity slider after selecting the section is dynamically displayed on the screen, which allows you to change the selected fragment of the model into a larger or smaller one. This means that if the result of selecting a surface does not suit your goals, you do not need to try to select the desired surface again and again. In Artex Studio 17, you point to the surface only one and then pick the surface you need with a simple slider movement. <laughs> Creating fitted primitives in Artex Studio was often associated with the need to position primitives relative to each other. The constraints that served these purposes, however, had limited functionality. Any constraints to a primitive in Artex Studio 16 could only be created within the same session in the Construct tab when this primitive was fitted. Closing the Construction tab made it impossible not only to change but also to display existing constraints. To build new constraints, the construction of the new fitted primitive was required. In Arctic Studio 17, all the inconveniences previously inherent in constraints no longer exist. Constraints are properly saved so you can change the existing constraint as well as base the new ones on the previously imposed constraints. However, please note that this is only applicable to constraints created in Arctic Studio 17. In other words, in Arctic Studio 17, you will not be able to edit constraints which were created in Arctic Studio 16. Another possibility that the new Arctic Studio offers is that you can view, modify, 
and create constraints even outside of the construct tab. For example, if you need to double check the, the respective position of two primitives when doing measurements, just turn them on quickly through the view tab in the top bar. O, shift, and C, shortcut. Let's continue with the next one, Outer Surface. Another brand new CAD feature in Arctic Studio 17 is the creation of outer surfaces. Now we have a one button solution for mesh to CAD transformations. Let's have a look. Outer Surface transforms the entire model into CAD surface unless a particular region of the mesh is pre-selected, in which case outer surface will be performed for the selected region exclusively. The feature has two settings, number of patches and a low T note. The latter changes the form of patches, and for some models, it allows you to get a higher surface quality. The default number of patches serves as a good approximate for orientation. However, if you need to transform a more detailed surface, this value must be increased. Remember that choosing too few patches will not allow Arctic Studio to successfully build out a surface. You will now be able to turn organic shapes into a CAD file to facilitate reverse engineering of combined geometries. It is also a great way to make a referential CAD surface out of a complex mesh, though that is functional in a third-party third software. Now we continue with really new thing here in Arctic Studio 17, Boolean operations. In Arctic Studio 17, not only we can create primitives in a new way, but we can now also perform several new types of operations with them. All types of primitives created in this studio can now be used in another new tab, Construct Edit. Let's have a look. We can now create unifications, subtractions, and intersections between meshes and CAD entities, meaning that the full set of basic building functions is now available in Arctic Studio. Arctic Studio becomes an instrument that not only generates 3D forms through 3D scanning, but also creates complicated shapes, primitives, uh, through combining meshes, primitives, and, and CAD models. Like the first new operation is unification, which adds the volume of the first model to the volume of the second, forming a unified combination of the two. In this case, we use standard primitive to complement our model to create a stand. Another one is subtraction. And subtraction creates a new model that is represented by the shape of one of the models with the volume of the second model deducted from it. An object with holes in the lower area that has not been scanned through completely here we can see that we fit a cylindrical primitive here and perform a Boolean sub subtraction based on the shape of the primitive. As a result, the model has an accurate hole where it should be. Amazing, isn't it? Okay. An intersection, which defines a new object based on the common volume of the selected models. We put one object inside another and create a common volume with a click of a button. Please note that you can always use an additional option, click Keep Initial Object, to ensure your selected objects remain intact in the workspace while the resulting mesh will be saved as a new object. Thus, new editing operations in the Construct tab can, for example, help to create molds or intricate forms, shape the mesh, shape the mesh based on CAD designs, and solve many other interesting tasks. Okay, and the next one is also a complete, completely new thing, split mesh. Mm -hmm. Another addition that can be formally attributed to the Boolean operations group, it allows you to split meshes with a pre-fitted plane. As a result of the operation, you will get two segments of the mesh that are separate objects in the workspace. The area of contact of the two parts is sealed off for both segments. This feature allows you to split meshes very quickly and effectively. It will be specifically useful for additive manufacturing professionals who need to be able to precisely break down an item into manageable chunks for further 3D printing. Like here on this great example of our new function. Maybe you have some thoughts to share about our new features uh, you're welcome to write anything in our chat. 
Okay, so we can continue with the next part, our quality inspection features. And the first of them is datum alignment. Aligning of the mesh and CAD model is an important function for quality control, which has been improved in the new version of Studio. So let's check in our next example of a new function. In Arctic Studio 16, mesh and CAD models had to be combined in the Align tab, where it was then necessary to assign at least three pairs of common points. This type of alignment was final, but it did not necessarily produce the most accurate outcome. After saving the result, it was possible to be the distance map in the measure style. In Arctic Studio 17, we have a new way to align mesh and CAD paths. It is now possible to align meshes to CAD models by specifying a set of key geometric features. Before you use a new datum alignment option, it is still important to pre-align a CAD model and a mesh that is move them closer to each other in the Align tab. Upon completion of the first stage, it becomes possible to perform a far more accurate match of individual surfaces for features. As a science, three datum is the maximum you can and will ever need to use. This is always enough to constrain all degrees of freedom. Depending on the type of datums you select, you can actually use just two datums to constrain the system completely. For example, two non-parallel cylinders. In some cases, you won't even need that. If it suits your inspection scenario, you are free to select just one geometric feature and align your models by that datum only. Upon choosing your datums, you will see how the respective position of the models changes after every selected feature. It is important to note that the auto of selection matters. For the first datum, the algorithm creates almost perfect matching with either non-existent or insignificant deviation. For the second datum, models will be aligned as precisely as the first constraint allows. And for the third, it will consider both previous constraints and do its best to align the models taking into account the limitations imposed by the first two datums. Creating your distance map is also now possible right in the datum alignment menu. You can choose a proper search distance and create the map by hitting the calculate button. If you opt to save the distance map, you can then find it in the measurement tab. Let's continue with the next target clouds related improvements. While the ability of Arctic scanners to perform well without targets is a good selling point for us, targets can be used with photogrammetry solutions to increase accuracy of the large objects. And Arctic Studio 17 offers a new layer of flexibility to target related workflows. It is now possible to see the distribution of error deviation across the whole set of reference features and manually control the quality of registration by targets, which will in turn reduce errors, more control, more accuracy. Okay, let's check how it was in Arctic Studio 16. Previously, Arctic Studio had the ability to import a target cloud and scan or perform global registration using it. However, these targets were not displayed in the main 3D view window during processing, and it was impossible to work with individual targets. In Arctic Studio 17, we not only have a new item type in the workspace, targets cloud, but we can also now import multiple reference target clouds into the workspace. So now it has become possible also to switch between them when selecting the targets tracking mode. Arctic Studio 17 also introduces a new workspace panel features. Once global registration with targets is done, you can evaluate deviations of every particular target and exclude bad ones from further global registration by removing it. Deviation is also shown visibly on the scan. The size and the color of the target represents how much it deviates from the reference position. If you were scanning to with the target cloud and it is selected together with scans, the deviation is calculated against the corresponding imported reference target cloud. If there was no reference cloud, 
and we are running registration by targets, the deviation is calculated against the mean average and is shown when the scans are selected. Corresponding targets in all frames are grouped together into instances. You can see deviation of the entire instance or select a particular one to analyze deviation of every target inside that instance. Another possibility is to generate a target cloud from a set of selected targets on the scans and match the distance between particular targets. To generate a new target cloud from the existing one, select the targets you need in the features workspace panel and right-click on them. In the menu that appears, you need to select the Create Targets Cloud option. You can also select the target cloud created in this way along with the scans and see the deviation calculated from it. If you need to measure the distance between particular targets, go to the Measures menu. After pressing the Distance button, select any two targets and the linear distance between them will be displayed in the panel. And now we continue with next thing, photo texturing. Actually, actually it helped uh, our users a lot in previous versions of Artic Studio, but it was maybe not really easy uh, to use it sometimes. So photo texturing or using photos with, from external cameras presents a wonderful opportunity to get a more detailed and clear texture than, was, than what capabilities of scanners allowed. Let's have a look how it works in Arctic Studio 16. Mm -hmm. So, uh, users could upload photo sets, which after successful re registration were displayed around the model as a cloud of cones, at the same time, we did not recommend using photos with different focal lengths or from different cameras. Listening to our customers, we set out to improve the workflow by enhancing the photo import algorithm and expanding the capabilities of users in working with individual photos. I'll have a look at these great models we can create with photo texturing. In Arctic Studio 17, all the pictures that you import are sorted by focal distance camera type and resolution. It means that if you import pictures from several different cameras or the same camera but with different exposition settings, they will all be put into separate data sets in the workspace. This way you can register the, all these pictures sequentially and use all of the pictures for the texturing source upon texturing. Okay, let's have a look again. Now, after completing photo registration, you will now be able to access registration quality of each individual picture and see the entire list of pictures in the data set. Just like with frames within the scan, the failed ones will be highlighted in red. You can double click on them, check what they look like and which areas of the object they cover. We also implemented a new viewing mode for the registered pictures that allows you to spot both inadequately registered pictures and very subtle misalignments. When you double click on the registered picture, you switch into the new superimposition viewing mode where you can see the exact overlap of the selected picture and the mesh. In this mode, you can turn on and off the photo display by switching the slider at the bottom of the workspace or using the Ctrl and Q keys. You can zoom in or out of the image by scrolling the middle mouse button or move the photo by pressing the very same button. To exit photo viewing mode, scroll the mouse wheel right, the, oh, sorry, with the right mouse button pressed or click outside the photo and slightly rotate the object. Now deleting an unsuccessful photo is also not just a piece of cake. Use the right click drop down menu or simply press the Dell key. So you could see that now working with photos and photo texturing is a completely uh, different uh, thing. It's much easier probably, you will like it. And the results are amazing. So let's have a look on the next thing, improvements on fusion creation in editing. Cre creating and editing a fusion has also become more convenient now thanks to several new features of Artex Studio 17. Mm -hmm. Let's have a look on these excluded erroneous frames. The new setting is essentially 
a way to filter out all the frames with max error numbers that don't live up to your standards. There is no need to move badly registered frames into a separate scan or erase them. Just specify the threshold parameter and create your fusion with only the best frames in the scans. Oh, this one actually is one of my favorites because uh, I remember spending a lot of time trying to make our fusion better and better. It was just like trying to select only the best frames. Now you can make it right before fusion. So let's have a look on another one. It's a new type of object selection, actually. Mm -hmm. Here it is. Arctic Studio 17 features a new eraser selection mode that enables instant hassle-free selection of separate areas of the model. It allows the users to save time on removal of the separate parts of the mesh, whether it's a small bit of noise or a large unwanted object which was scanned with ray. The tool can be especially useful when working in Arctic Studio 17 with large models containing many separate parts, or when using the leave biggest object option or the small objects filter is not suitable. Here, actually, you could see like a huge object that was scanned with Ray, of course. Uh, it's not easy to delete just like, you know, a small part of it. But with this new feature, it's much better. Okay, the next one, improved hole filling. Let's see, what is it? In Arctic Studio 17, we introduced an improved hole filling algorithm in the Fix Holes tab. It enables creation of smooth patches, works faster, and doesn't create sharp edges that may not suit round or natural shapes. We also added two hole filling options, smooth and flat. If you are filling a rather flat hole, go to the corresponding option, while the smooth setting is particularly suitable for tricky holes in the curved parts of the mesh. So here you can see this perfectly working algorithms in both options now are really great and you can choose what you actually need right now. On the top of the features we have already discussed, Artex Studio 17 presents a variety of changes designed to improve your experience with scanners and projects. One of the main changes concerning Fusion is the optimization of the algorithm which made it possible to ensure that the creation of sharp and smooth fusions in Artex Studio 17 requires 30% less memory resources and 10% less time. In other words, this will help computers that lack the ideal characteristics needed to run Fusion for larger projects than before. Great, isn't it? Okay, let's have a look in another video that we prepared. It's about faster reconstruction for Leo. HD frames are reconstructed 50% faster when working with data captured with Leo. The quality of reconstruction has improved as well, so you may notice significantly sharper edges on, on your Leo fusions. Mm -hmm. Okay. We also have worked on restoration of crashed projects. So Artex Studio 17 also has a new method of project restoration after unexpected closure. Now again, let's see the difference. In Artex Studio 16, if a project wasn't named, all saved scans were stored in the default temp location with a random name, which brought additional difficulties to the process of restoring the project. In Artex Studio 17, Crashes while working on a project, then upon the next start of the software, it will prompt the user to restore the crashed project. I hope you, I hope you never experienced this thing, but if your project wasn't named and for some reason it crashed, now it will be much easier. You just start Artex Studio 17 uh, again, and you can see that you can continue working with your project. Okay, what's about our chat? Okay, whole feeling is nice. Uh, another comment. Uh, yeah, another uh, comment about uh, smooth fusion that was it was a bit too slow, but we hope it will be better now. Experience with smooth fusion and crash project recovering. Yeah, <laughs> I hope that you will not use this. Uh, future, future a lot and you will not see this window a lot but still okay we also uh, have changed uh, 
another thing. Now we have detachable workspace panels. Let's have a look. What can you do now? Each panel now can be detached from the workspace and put virtually anywhere in the 3D window. You can hide the workspace afterwards and make full use of each and every inch of your screen. So if you don't want to see your uh, working panels, you can have more space with your 3D windows. Or maybe you can just re remove it anywhere you want. Maybe not a big thing, but sometimes it helps too. Okay. Next feature in Artic Studio 17, we also have nice connection with Artic Cloud. Let's have a look again. Mm -hmm. In Artic Studio 17, there is a new quick way of sharing a fusion. You will now be able to share the acquired meshes and generate shareable links. It takes a few moments to convert the mesh on the Artic Cloud site, after which you can create a link to accept the model and send it to anyone you wish. Remarkably, one doesn't need an Arctic Cloud account to be able to view the shared model, but if and when required, any new user will easily be able to register with Arctic Cloud and get five gigabytes of space for their 3D models. Okay. So feel free to share your models and then manage all your links on Arctic Cloud website. But that's not everything that we have today. We also have changed our camera modes. And actually, yeah, we can see it on the screen again in the next video. We added a new camera mode into Artic Studio 17 and made it the default setting so that our users' experience across different software packages is more or less the same. Okay. However, we realized that there were a lot of our customers who are used to the old way of rotation. So we decided to add a switch in the view menu that turns on and off the camera mode. If you prefer the camera you used to in the previous versions of Artic Studio, feel free to switch back to the old camera rotation set and go to the view tab and select or deselect orbit camera. Now it's always nice to have additional options. So now you can try both ways, uh, camera and maybe use your favorite one. Okay, do we have another new comments in the chat? Yes, there are. So we are getting closer to the end of our presentation. Please don't forget to write a question before the Q&A session. And now let's have a look the next feature, it's automatic HD reconstruction test. In the Artic Studio 17, we added a very quick benchmark test that checks your GPU type, the driver version, and adapts the internal settings in a way the reconstruction happens at the best possible speed. Let's have a look on the screen again. You will only need to run the test once, and it will save you time in every HD reconstruction. So it's totally worth the couple of minutes it takes. If you don't plan to do HD reconstruction, feel free to skip it. It will be available under the performance tab of the settings menu should you change your mind or install a new GPU. Okay. And almost the last one, actually. Uh, it's about importing your projects from Arta Clio Scan. Let's look on the video. Now, if you want to import several data sets into one Artic Studio project, you are free to do so. The data sets that you select will be consequently imported, and you won't need to reconnect to the scanner numerous times. And thank you all for watching our webinar on the new features of Artic Studio 17. I hope that you're excited or ready to try all these new features yourself. We believe that the new tools will help you streamline your scanning process the recording of today's webinar will be available on our YouTube channel, so you're welcome to enjoy this and other videos. Do subscribe to our channel for more amazing content. Share the videos with your network and yes, hit the like button. Thanks for being with us today and see you next time.